Oke, okay. uh, good morning ladies and gentlemen. Please introduce, my name is Irwan from Business Manager from Indonesia. Welcome to Emerald Publishing Service uh, webinar series. Okay, uh, I need G, can you start the presentation? Yeah, can you see it? Yeah, can you stop the... Hold on. Yep. Okay. I will, the first, I want to tell you about the itinerary webinar publishing service Indonesia for March is 2021. The first is welcoming remarks and introduction to the webinar. And second is introduction of the speakers. The third, Session is about Emerald introduction. Fourth is the about the presentation from the Judy. Is uh, she is from the publishing service manager from the East Asia, and also after that editor session will conduct by Dr. Imam Hari Mawan, and after that is question and answer session and the conclusion of the closing of the webinar. Before I want to uh, uh, talking about this webinar. Just a moment, G. Can you back? All the material will be. Uh, in, uh, I think the all material you can be download. Yeah, you can be download and the in the in what you can be download is the app the material and the all of ref. Uh, if you want need the question, you can tick type your question in the question uh, in the question feature. Yeah. But all the petition audio will be moved during the, the during the webinar, and also the attendees will be get the certificate and also the webinar video links. If you miss it, some some segments, yeah. After after this session, it will be finished. Okay, next. Please introduce myself. My name is Irwan. I'm the business manager for Indonesia. I'm already maybe about nine years joined with Emerald until now. I am do a lot of the publishing service or also sales service. And we also I talk about the guide to buy publishing for journal, book, and also case study. I conduct so many user training demos and also doing the publication talk to raise awareness and the share market knowledge. Next. Okay, now I will present you Miss Judy. She is the publishing service for the Emerald Publishing. She is based on the Taipei. Judy manages the portfolio Emerald Publishing Service you know, across East Asia, Southeast Asia, and Australia Asia. Emerald Publishing Service team is to support editor worldwide and to raise to raise the awareness of the open access. Next. Now I introduce you the Dr. Imam Harimawan is the editor in chief for Asian Journal Accounting Research. Dr. Imam Aryawan is the also is the assistant professor in the Department of Accounting, Faculty of Economic and Business, University of Erlangga, Indonesia. He received his PhD degree in accounting from the City University of Hong Kong, and the degree in 2009 from the National Chengkeng University in Taiwan, and bachelor degree in accounting in the University of Erlangga in Indonesia. I think Dr. Imam you also the, have the author from the, a lot of the article, I think more than 50, which is very impressive for the author, authors, yeah. Now I want to, next. G, next. Okay, now is I want to, Forward to my presentation to Judy. Now she wants to come about, about open access and Amra publishing service. Judy, now it's your turn. Thank you, Iwan. Um, could you transfer the control panel, please? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, hope everyone can see my screen now. Okay. I'll start yes. the presentation. Yes, I can see you. Yes. 
Yeah. yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the session today. My name is Judy. I'm the Publishing Services Manager at Emerald Publishing. And today I'll be covering about open access. And also I will be introducing you to the Emerald Publishing Services that we provide at Emerald Publishing. So here's my agenda. First of all, I'm going to introduce you to Emerald Publishing, um, how what kind of publisher we are, and then I'll be covering some basics uh, about open access. Some of you might already be pretty familiar with this, so I'll just go through it quite quickly. And then I'll be mentioning about the recent open access trend, and, and then fi uh, fine, last but not least, I'll be introducing you to the services we provide. It's uh, basically covering um, the all the publication process that a journal might need. Okay, so let's start. Uh, uh, let's start about Emerald Publishing. So we are an academic publisher founded in 1967. So we have been in the industry for more than five decades now. We are the leading publisher in social science and applied fields. We currently publish more than 300 journals, 2,500 uh, 2, books, 1,700 cases. We are the winner of independent publisher in 2020. And also we are committed to open research and real impact. So we're the signatory of Declaration of Research Assessment, DORA. We're a member, sorry, we're a member of, oh, sorry. Okay, we're a member of Open Access Scholarly Publisher Association, and we also signed up to the SDG goals uh, as a publisher, which you might have heard it, uh, quite often recently. Okay, and then we're going into the open access basics. So what is open access? The first thing that's worth noticing that uh, one have to know would, would be it's dynamic and evolving. So the concept of open access was uh, initiated back in 1997. However, it has changed quite a lot since then and it's still evolving. So there, are, there will be like new open access published model almost every year mentioned by different publishers. So it's quite dynamic. Uh, and the general definition for open access will be free availability to everyone. So you can see the symbol on the right hand side of the screen. So this is the symbol for open access. If you see the symbol next to your journal or book, then that means that content will be open access. And it's more developed in Europe uh, mainly. So um, I've put a uh, most commonly used definition on this slide. I know it's a bit wordy, but I promise this will be the wordiest slide in my presentation. So this uh, Budapest Open Access Initiative, it's uh, quite often referred to when it comes to open access. There are a few keywords that you might want to notice here. So first of all, it's ob obviously it's free availability on public internet, and it's uh, permitting the user to read, download, copy, distribute, and adapt. And finally, it's very important to know that it's uh, it, the authors of the content should always be properly acknowledged. So that's in the last sentence. Okay. Then uh, let's go into so why do we need to consider open access? So there are some benefits. The first one is obviously the increasing visibility of the content because the readers, um, especially for readers outside the school, like publish, pub, pu policy makers or practitioners, uh, they will be able to access your contents easier than uh, the traditional sub subscription model. So when we talk about subscription model, that means usually the university or the institution library will need to pay for, v, for fee to view the contents that's behind the paywall. So, but for open access, you don't have that barrier in between. So it's easier for the readers or the audience to reach the content in the long notch. And also, especially in Europe, there's a increasing amount of grants that ask, request the authors to comply with open access because they need to show the founders, they need to show the uh, sponsors and also the taxpayers that the research, uh, to prove the research is um, ha has used the money properly. So um, that's why they, they will request also to publish with open access as well. 
And then uh, finally, because it's easier for the reader to access the content, so normally it will lead to higher citation rates for the contents as well. And on this slide, uh, there's something, uh, there's a small mark on the left hand bottom. You can see a CC BY symbol there. Um, I'm going to introduce you to the CC BY license in my uh, next few slides. So uh, before that, um, I would like to briefly introduce about the commonly seen open access publishing route. So you might have seen quite a lot of different types of open access, and I'm using Emerald's uh, publishing route as an example. However, these are also quite often seen in other publishers as well. When we talk about uh, open access models uh, or publishing routes, there are three things you might want to notice. So the first one is where can the article be accessed for free? And the second one is which version will be freely available? And finally, and the most importantly, who will be paying for the publication fees? So I'm going to go into details of each type. So, uh, yeah, please uh, keep it on mode, otherwise there will be echoes. Um, thank you. Um, so the first one will be Gold Open Access. Um, some of you might already have the experience submitting to Gold Open Access. So first of all, uh, where will it be published? It will be published by the publisher and it will be hosted on the publisher platform mostly and also on the public internet. Which version will be published? It will be the version of record. And when we mean of a version of record, that means the version is, has been final edited and typesetted by the publisher. And then finally, who's going to pay? So for gold open access the author will be will need to pay but the author might be funded by founders or institutions so as you can see in this image that it says uh, the, the author the founder or the institution will have to pay and what the fee will be called article processing charge apc some of you might have heard of this before so it's basically the publication fee that the author needs to pay to get uh published this article or the paper in open uh, in gold open access. At Emerald, we have two different types of gold open access. One is called hybrid, and the other is called full fully gold open access. What we mean by hybrid, and it's also offered by other publishers as well. It means the journal itself will remain in the traditional subscription model. So the journal, some of the content of in this journal will be behind a paywall. However, the author can choose to publish his article or his paper in open access mode. So there will be partially some of the content in this journal will be open access, so freely access accessible, and some of the content will say behind the paywall. So that's why we call it hybrid. So you got two different kinds of content uh, in the journal. And for fully gold open access, it means the journal itself it's open access. So every every article in the journal will be open access, and it also needs to pay for the APCs. And the next one is Green OA. Uh, before I uh, enter the definition of Green OA, I have to say it actually varies between publisher to publisher. So before you're submitting to Green OA, please make sure that you read through the publisher's policy. At Emerald, we're using uh, the general policy policies that uh, the same as other publishers. It's just one difference that I'm going to mention later. So. What is green open access? Green open access is, you can imagine it as having a copy uh, with you. So it's for it's mainly for also submitting to subscription journal in the traditional way. So his official copy of his paper, which as we said, it's called the version of record will be published by the publisher in the subscri subscription model. So it will be behind a paywall. However, the author can have another copy that is not the version of record. It's called author accepted manuscript. So basically it's not final edited and type cited by the, the publisher. So he, can, he or she can put the manuscript 
into his personal uh, repository website or institutional repository. This is free. Um, for most publisher, there will be an embargo period between it. What it means is you have once the publisher um, publish the content online on the subscription model, the author will need to wait for some time and then you're allowed to put the paper into your institutional repository for free. At Emerald, we do this a little bit differently. We have a zero embargo policy, which means for our authors who choose screen open access, you don't need to wait. So once the contents is online on the subscription model, you can, you can put your papers, the manuscript version of your paper into the institutional repository. And then finally, I'm introducing you the Platinum OA, or it's also called Diamond OA or Sponsor OA, so all related to the jury. <laughs> um, so what is Platinum OA? Um, Platinum OA, it's a journal level open access, so it does not apply to article level, and it means the whole journal it's a whole, the whole, the publication of the whole journal is sponsored, usually by the institution or by the owner of the journal. So it could be association as well, or societies. And um, it's very similar to Gold OA. It's just the, the APCs or the publication fees is covered by the sponsor instead of the author. So there will be no charge for the author to submit to uh, Platinum OA journals. And Emerald Publishing Services is also using this model, so it's free for also to submit to um, Emerald Publishing Services journals. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, cover the Creative Commons licenses. So as I uh, draw your attention to the little symbol in my previous slides, you can see a CC BY symbol there. There are actually more than one types of uh, CC Creative Commons or CC license. The most commonly used one is CC BY. It's used by all publishers, as far as I'm aware. Uh, but the rest of the subcategories are not necessarily offered by the publishers. So if you're if you prefer not CC BY, but like the subcategories, you probably need to check with the publisher in advance. So what is CC BY? It's basically uh, follows the guidance of the open access definition with just sing. So it's okay to reuse, to distribute, to adapt, as long as the author or the creator has been acknowledged. And there are some sub subcategories that further restrict uh, how the content can be used. So there is CC by SA means uh, the, con the adaptation must be shared under the same term. And there's also CC by NC, so it's it's only for non-commercial use, uh, non-commercial use. And then there's also non-derivatives -der or adaptations, so that's CC by ND. CC by uh, ND compared to SA and NC is the most, uh, most strict one. And under that, you can further restrict how the content can be used. So there's also CC by NCSA and CC by NCND. Okay. And then I'm going to mention a little bit about predatory journals. So uh, if you've seen the news, you'll probably see this has come up almost every year. It has been discussed quite widely um, ever since open access has been born. Um, personally, I quite like this definition provided by Nature in 2019. So I mean, it says predatory journals, publishers are entities that prioritize self-interest at the expense of scholarship and are categorized by false or misleading, misleading information, deviation from best editorial publication practice, a lack of transparency, and or use the aggressive and indiscriminate solicitation practice. So you might found it a, a, a bit abstract. It's not uh, probably not as concrete as one would imagine. So I will give you some examples uh, to uh, further explain on this. So if you look at the final sentence, it says aggressive and indiscriminate solicitation practice. What does it exactly mean? 
So one of the best example would be emails. I believe you, all of you, and like me, we often receive suspicious emails uh, that's inviting you to submit papers or uh, to a conference or to a journal. And when you receive email like that, it's always better to double check the information in the email. Uh, one of the common features is normally the sender in the email will probably not provide his or her full name, so it might be just first name or just last name, uh, which can make it look a bit suspicious. Also, it's worth checking the organizer of the meeting or the conference or the owner of the journal, or the editor-in-chief of the journal to double check that and to make sure the information provided in the email is valid. And then to check whether it, the journal is perpetrated or not, it's better to go to the journal info page, so the journal homepage, to check the following information. So the first one is obviously publishers. So for the well-known ones like Elsevier, Wiley, Teleinferences, and also Emerald, you will be able to find a list of journals the publisher pub publishes on their website. So if you receive uh, a journal information or when you check the journal information, it says it's published by which publisher, it's better cross check with the publisher's website and to see uh, is it actually published by the publisher. And then the next one is journal title. So there's a, uh, so predatory journals, they tend to use journal titles that's very similar to well-established journals. So an example is if there's a, a very well-known journal in your field called XYZ, for example, then the predatory journal is likely to call international XYZ. Or if the journal, if the well-known journal is called XYZ journal, then the predatory journal is likely to call journal of XYZ, so something really similar. And it's not uncommon there are journals have similar titles. It doesn't mean it's necessarily a predatory journal, but if you find journals with similar title, it's always better to double check uh, if that's the journal uh, you, you want to submit. And the next one is editorial board. So editorial board members should always be clearly listed on the journal website. And you can you can cross check if there's any uh, well established scholars in the board, and then it's better to go to the scholar's personal uh, pr professional profile to see if he has mentioned a journal in his uh, profile, because sometimes the name was just borrowed, uh, but he the, the person himself probably not aware that he's already in that editorial board. So it's always better to cross check. And then next is copyright licenses. So for OA journal, as we mentioned, usually they use CC BY, but even if, you, if they use CC BY, they should always state this very clearly on the journal homepage. So it's better to check. And some, uh, some journals are free access instead of open access. So the, the copyright is assigned to the journal owners or the institution that founded the journal, but it's not necessarily re retain, remains with the author. So it's always worth checking the copyright license statement on the journal homepage. And then next one is peer review process. Uh, it's, uh, the journal should always say what kind of peer review process it conducts um, during the editorial process. So it's worth checking out as well. And then for transparency statement, I'll have to say not all journal having this on their homepage and that's perfectly fine. But if you find a transparency statement, it's the easiest way to find all the information I just mentioned above because it will all be listed in the transparency statement. And then it's worth checking whether the publisher itself is a member of COP, Committee on Publishing Ethics, and also it should state clearly that they adhere to the, the COP guidelines when they're facing any publishing ethics related uh, problems. And finally, it's also fee, so the APCs. I'll give you a reference. So the APCs at MRO is around 2,500 pounds, and that's slightly above the average, but not too expensive. So unless you're submitting to, let's say in scientific world, it will probably be nature kind of ranking, 
journals. Otherwise, the APC fees shouldn't be too higher than this. If it's too high, then you should stay suspicious because it might be a predatory journal. Okay. And step two is cross-check databases and list. So I've listed uh, some of the very, uh, you, you'll definitely be very familiar with. So DOAJ, OLAB, um, Cabells, or, or Web Sciences and Scopus. Although you might have seen the news recently, these databases uh, could uh, accidentally include some predatory journals in their database. So always make sure that you don't just check one list, you cross check between several lists um, to see if the journal, so if the journal say they're indexed in ESCII, so that should be a co uh, should be in Web of Science Master Journal list. This, the Web of Science Master Journal list is free um, to check. So just cross check that and see if the journal is actually indexed in ESCII. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, briefly go over the recent open access trends. So the first one, uh, we're still under the uh, influence of it is COVID-19, the pan pandemic. However, the pandemic, uh, especially during last year, has more or less pushed the development of open access as well, because the, the, uh, the academics, they need less time to publication, they need to access the content or knowledge way faster than they used, uh, used to be. So uh, there's like a, a trend to push open research that it can reduce the barrier between the scholars when they collaborate. So the whole um, academic ecosystem is increasingly open because especially during the pandemic. So as I said in the third point, open research. So what exactly is open research? What's the difference between open research and open access? As you can see in the image here, open access is actually under the umbrella of open research, or it's called also known as open scholarship. So the core concept uh, of open research is making the scholarly communication more transparent and collaborative. And it's about sharing your research output, including data, coding, research methods. And it's, it's also about reaching wide wider audiences and that's as we mentioned about open access definition as well so it's about raising the visibility and discoverability of content okay and then another one you might have heard it's planet s planet s is a mandate that that guides the publication of all journal articles funded by collegian s members and what does that mean Collegian S is basically a group of organization that found the publication of academic research. However, most members of Collegian S based in Europe, as we said, open access is more developed in Europe. And what's the implication? So it means if the author is funded by Collegian S member, the author will have to publish in a planet compliant journal platform or repository and plan S came into effect on the 1st of January this year so it's already come into effect so what does the what did the authors have to do so they have three options first of all they'll have to publish open access uh, it's either an open access journal or an open, or an open access platform and the journal itself will have to be registered in DOAJ or at least in the process of being registered in DOAJ. And the second route, the repository route, it's basically just green OA that we just mentioned. So if the author wants to publish in a subscription journal, then he or she need to have a copy um, available in the repository. And for Plan S, a request there cannot be an embargo period for green open. And finally, uh, it's transformative arrangement. And what does that mean? Is it means that if uh, the author choose to publish already in a subscription journal, so that's what we call a hybrid journal. If uh, the, the author choose this route, then the publisher will need to commit it to <clears throat> under the transformative arrangement. That means that 
publisher will need to say, yes, it's now a submission subscription journal, but we will transform the journal into fully open access in the near future. So that's what it means for transformative arrangement. Okay. And then let's look at a little bit about OA in Indonesia. So uh, this is basically from Emerald's uh, databases. So it probably not as um, comprehensive as like a global databases, but you can see the trend quite clearly. Comparing to the traditional content, the OA content its uh, percentage is fairly high uh, since 2015 to 2019. And then this is the top uh, 10 OA subject area published uh, in uh, from Indonesian author. And this aligns to Emerald's core expertise. So you won't be able to see any scientific uh, subject area in this chart. It's mainly um, social sciences and applied fields. So the top one in this chart is education. And there are also public health or sociology, psychology, linguistic. So these are some of the popular uh, topics that are uh, published by Emerald. And also, especially between tw 2017 to 2018, we have a, 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 a obvious scroll in the publication from Indonesian author at Emerald as well. Okay. And then next, I'm going to introduce you about the publishing services that we provide here at Emerald Publishing. So what's the key benefit of uh, Emerald Publishing Services? We also call it EPS, which is easier for you to remember. <laughs> um, so the first one's global reach. Uh, in 2019, <clears throat> our journals have 143,000 downloads per month. And on average, uh, journal page views increased by 500% after partnership with Emerald. And we also provide uh, produce high quality research. So as I said, we have about a little bit more than 300 journals at Emerald. And among them, 289 are in Web of Science, 291 are in Scopus. So that's about 80 to 90% of our journals. And finally, it's um, discoverability. So we do uh, like XMLs or, or data configurations to, uh, to make sure that our content is easily searchable on Primo, Summons, EBSCO, and Google Scholar. And on your right hand side, you can see an image. That's what the Emerald Publishing Services covered. So we cover the publishing, production, and dissemination side of, um, um, uh, of journal publications. And I'll go into a little bit further. So for publishing side, first of all, we provide statistic reporting. And what that means is you will be able to see how your downloads grows, how your citation grows, and who's the top cited author, which is the top cited papers, and that, that will help you to understand your journals better. And then secondly, as I mentioned, we're using the Platinum OA um, model. And then there's also citation management and references linking features, enhanced metadata, and we also provide HTML and PDF version. I'm going to show you a journal page and where that's where you can access the content. We work with Pablon reviewers tools and these tools will enable you to find the suitable reviewers and expand your reviewer pool because some of the editors suffered from having enough reviewers for their content. And Pablon reviewers tool also linked with Web of Science databases, so you can you'll be able to reach the authors there as well. And finally, we'll provide publication ethics and rights advice in case you have any problems uh, related to ethics. Production wise, uh, it's worth noticing we're using article level publishing. And what does that mean is um, once the, uh, an article is ready and it's in production, it's ready to go online, we publish it online in, in a place we call early site. 
that article and that paper will be able to receive sites since then. So it doesn't have to wait until go into an issue of the journal. It, it can it, it will be citable once it's go, it, it goes on live. And then the second one is online submission and peer review system. So we're using Scholar One. Uh, some of you might have heard this, the Scholar One system uh, for this. And then there will be a journal homepage created for your journal and will help you update and maintenance. So some of the journal, they have regular webinars or events and we'll, we can help you to upload the news on your journal homepage so more people can see it. And then there'll be typesetting XML, content management support and training, especially like training with the system like Scala One or with the Poplon tools. And also the production process will be managed by Emerald, so you, you won't need to worry about the production. And then the third aspect is dissemination. We at, at Emerald we have a database called Emerald Insight. So it's where a lot of schools uh, or students will access Emerald Insight to find the contents they need. It's, it's subscribed by quite a lot of institutions. And all the EPS journal content will go on to Emerald Insight. So it increases your visibility of the content. And we also help you with submission to abstract and indexing services. And as mentioned, it will also help the content to be listed in major discovery services. We also do search engine optimization. That means if you Google in, in Google Scholar or in Google, Google uh, in the title of a paper, for example, we will help that to make sure the content show on the top of the research, re the search results list. And also for Emerald site itself, we enjoyed 109 million visitors worldwide, and we work with more than 500K researchers in more than 130 countries. Okay. And there's also additional services in marketing, printing, and consultancy. Uh, so what I've mentioned, uh, by here is the call package that we provide in our services, but there's also additional options if you're interesting. Uh, we can tailor that and provide it to you as well. And finally, this is just to give you an idea that our partners worldwide. So as you can see on the map, it's almost from all over the world in, in, in East Asia as well, and also in Europe and in North America, South America. Um, and some of the, the journals you can see on your right hand side. Okay. And then I'm going to show you one of the journal homepage before I hand it over to Dr. Iman. So just let me switch to the web page. So this is an example of a journal homepage uh, we will be creating for you. So this is the homepage for Asian Journal of Accounting Research. As you can see, here is all the information that I mentioned <laughs> that needs should be clearly uh, stated on the journal homepage. And if you click it, you will be able to see the details here. And then there's a table of content and you will be able to see the, to access the content here. And as I mentioned, there's an early site where you can see uh, uh, the, the articles that had gone into an issue. And then also, if you click on submit your paper, you will lead the author to the Scholar One system. So it's all interlinked and it's very easy for the author to, uh, to complete the submission process from the homepage as well. Okay. Okay. And I've also, oops, just let me switch back to my PowerPoint. Okay. So I've also listed some useful links here and you will be able to click through when you receive the sites from, uh, from our team. And my presentation finishes here and I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Iman. Um, G, would you help me transfer? Thank you.
Thank you, Judy. Now I want to transfer the presentation to Dr. Iman. Okay, thank. Please, Dr. Iman, can you now present your presentation? Yeah, thank you, Irwan, and yeah, thank I you, Judy. Just want to make sure that you can. Okay. Uh, just want to make sure before I start. Uh, uh, have you seen your, I mean, uh, my slides? Is it clear? Yes, I can see your slide now. Okay, thank you, Irwan. Thank you, Judy. And thank you for ever, everyone who making uh, this webinar happen. Yeah, uh, I will introduce myself. My name is Iman Harimawan from Universitas Erlangga. And uh, I'm very glad uh, to have this webinar. And thank you for Emerald uh, inviting me to become one of the speaker for this webinar. Yeah, um, I'm the editor-in-chief for Asian Journal of Accounting Research, uh, one journal uh, owned by Unitas Erlangga, Indonesia. Uh, just a brief overview about Unitas Erlangga. Unitas Erlangga is one of the best university in Indonesia. We are uh, ranking number four in terms of QS ranking in Indonesia. Yeah. Um, I will briefly introduce about what is the aim and scope of Asian Journal of Accounting Research. Yeah, uh, so uh, we provide uh, a forum for international researchers to publish uh, an articles. Uh, we also welcome uh, methodologies, uh, not only quantitative, but also qualitative and mixed method. And we focus on developing countries in majority in Asia. That's why we uh, name it Asian Journal of Accounting Research. Yeah, uh, we invite any topics related to accounting and finance, mostly accounting, uh, for example, like accounting information system, asset pricing, auditing, auditing and financial accounting, behavioral accounting, finance, corporate finance and corporate governance, digital accounting and finance, financial markets and institutions, and other topics uh, that are related uh, to accounting and finance. Yeah, but before I go <clears throat> into detail about the Asian Journal of Accounting Research, let me share a brief uh, experience uh, on how I connect with Emerald. I think if I remember correctly, uh, uh, it was in 2017, after I graduated from City University of Hong Kong. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, maybe I can start uh, while I'm at City University of Hong Kong, yeah. Uh, CTU has, uh, I think two journals, which is a, a good quality journals. The first one is China Journal of Accounting Research and also Asia Pacific Journal of Accounting and Economics. At that time, I learned a lot on how to maintain a good quality of journals. Yeah. And then after I, I graduated from uh, City University of Hong Kong, uh, I went back to Indonesia to my uh, university, Universitas Erlangga. And then at that time, uh, I was discussed with my team and we discussed on how to improve the quality of the journals. Uh, there are several ways. Uh, I mean, uh, you can hire many good persons here yeah, and also you can hire many uh, uh, good editor and also you, you try to, uh, what is that, to compile your link into one platform, which is journal. Yeah, and another thing is that you can also working with uh, uh, well-known publishers such as Emerald. At the time, uh, I sent an email to, I can't remember exactly the name, yeah, someone in Emerald, and then I sent him an email, I informed, uh, I, I informed her that uh, at the time, uh, we were uh, planning to visit UK, uh, to visit uh, other institution, and at the time, I just dropped an email to Emerald and to, uh was that to check whether there is possibility to have meeting and to discuss what is the pon potential collaboration between Unitas Erlangga and also uh, Emerald. And then uh, we met in London uh, with one of the editor uh, from the Emerald. And then we uh, discussed several things in very nice discussion. Uh, we had a uh, discussion in the one restaurant uh, in the city library. Yeah, and then after that, we continue to discuss about what is what type of collaboration that we have. And finally, we've been about four years, if I remember correctly, uh, working with Emeralds up to now. 
yeah and then let me go to the next slide. this is uh, our editorial team uh it consists from uh well-known researcher come come from uh, four regions and also nine countries we have dr muhammad abdul uh he is my good friend uh coming from university of Brunei darussalam he is indonesian as well but i knew him from one of the professor from uh Universitas Erlangga, professor raditya and then uh, the next one is uh, dr sami adwan from sussex university uk i met with him uh, during the conference of journal of contemporary accounting and economics i think it was in malaysia uh, four years back and one of my uh, colleagues from Universitas Erlangga is dr nadia uh, she graduated from taiwan and also uh, uh, Dr. Ahmed, Ahmed El Masri from Coventry University. Uh, for case of Dr. El Masri, uh, he dropped an email to me uh, to check whether it is possible to join Asian Journal of Accounting Research. And at that time, I also considered about the uh, nationality because we, we want to invite more papers from uh, Asia. Dr. Sami is from Palestine uh, uh, and also developing countries. So Dr. Sami is from Palestine and we uh, invite him and also Dr. El Masri, if I remember correctly, from uh, one country in uh, Middle East or Africa. I cannot remember exactly. Yeah. Uh, based on that uh, consideration and also, of course, based on uh, his uh, research reputations, we, 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 are, we were very welcome to invite him to join and we have also dr damai nasutian he uh he, he is my colleague from Unitas erlanga and he has uh, uh quite good connections with uh author from indonesia and asia and uh dr john nolan yeah dr john nolan is uh, i met him when i was uh taking my master in national Chengdu university he was the visiting professor at the time and i uh uh i just dropped him an email to ask uh a, a time for discussion with him at that time i think it, uh, it was back in 2008 yeah and then we had the discussion and he invited me to come to queensland university of technology at that time uh, because he was at qut at that time and i uh after uh uh, uh uh, submission process and I got uh, invitation to study at QUT but at that time I couldn't make it and John Nolan invited me to join City University of Hong Kong and I made it uh, in 2011 yeah and uh, um, at that time he he did several studies uh, in based, uh, using Taiwan sample uh, so I I assume that he's familiar with Asia uh, studies so in accounting and that's why uh, one of the reason why we invite uh, Dr. John Nolan. Dr. Adel Sarea uh, from Ahlia University is also at the same case with Dr. Ahmed El Masri. Uh, he approached uh, me, uh, he approached Asian Journal of Accounting Research officially and we, after we look at his profile and considering about the diversity of the country, uh, we decided to invite him uh, to join us. Yeah, And we have uh, Dr. Rohami. Dr. Rohami is one of our uh, college in the University of Utara, Malaysia. Uh, yeah, we met uh, four years back uh, in Malaysia. And we have also Dr. Evizal Abdul Wahab. Uh, he is one of the person who help us a lot on uh, increasing the quality of the Asian Journal of Accounting Research. He's also from Malaysia, but uh, working in Curtin University of Australia. And for the last two, Dr. Chang Yanan is uh, she is my uh, friend. Uh, uh, when I was taking my PhD at City University of Hong Kong, and also Dr. Mo Ying. Uh, both of them are publishing in a very good journal, in top tier journal, if I remember correctly, it's accounting review. Yeah, uh, now uh, uh, Dr. Yanan is working in China and Dr. Ying is working in Hong Kong. And we still keep contact and uh, we hope that uh, both of uh, them can support us on uh, attracting author from China to join Asian Journal of Accounting Research. So, so basically, if I recap, um, there are a lot of possibilities and a lot of opportunities uh, for us 
to invite a good person if we uh, show a good uh what is that a good uh uh what is that a good uh maybe uh well plan on how to improve the quality of the journals yeah so uh yeah i did uh like informal presentation to them on how we do and also uh, emerald is also a uh, well-known publisher which also i think uh, uh i have to put some credit to emerald uh, which also support us on approaching the editors yeah uh, this is the our current uh, condition uh, we have uh, quite good of diversity international contributions and we have a positive trend on uh, the submission and also the download is also increased the number of downloads uh, uh, up to september 2020 yeah, it's uh, up to 25000 downloads yeah and if you look at the country or region of submitting authors is quite diverse yeah and we we want to increase the diversity of the authors as well and also if you look at the uh, uh, the proportion uh, we have to admit that uh, uh, most of the, most of the submission are still from indonesia yeah but uh, it's only less than 25% percent which is i think is quite good yeah if we uh, if we know that uh, uh, the journal is based in indonesia yeah it, it means that more than 75% authors are error submit uh, uh, submitted papers or authors are coming from uh, uh, overseas yeah uh, and we receive uh, more than 20 220 submission during the last three years yeah it's increasing uh as you i think everyone noticed that it's uh, uh very difficult uh to build a reputation of the journal especially in early state of the journals we established the journal in 2015 if i 2015 or 16 if i remember correctly yeah uh and then gradually uh we uh put uh we present uh like uh, we do pitching yeah uh, out, but our plan to our uh uh dean and uh, she i think uh, she she have some belief about the uh, prospect of this journal and then uh we start uh step by step to build the reputation of the uh journals and about citation uh, this is our current performance if you look at the uh, scopus uh, simulated site scores uh, we work with emerald to calculate this one uh, we our site scores is 2.83 yeah it's quite uh, quite good actually it's i think maybe q3 or q2 yeah uh, yeah but uh, we maintain the number of publications uh, it's not as uh, because uh, if we look at uh, Judy mentioned about predatory journals. Yeah, yeah, we can see that so many. Uh, 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 there are several journals that uh, get into Scopus, and then suddenly they increase the number of uh, uh, publishing articles. Yeah, but uh, for AJR, we want to keep uh, uh, 24 articles uh, every year. Yeah, maybe maximum 30 articles we, because we have three uh issue per year yeah and now we have just sub submitted uh scopus inclusion application and hopefully it will uh we will get the good results uh, uh within this year yeah to increase the reputation of our uh, uh journal as well for the actual simulated side score uh yeah for the actual simulated set score is uh, 99 uh sorry uh, 2.36 yeah okay i can go to the next slide wait a minute yeah uh the what about the process for editorial editorial timeliness yeah uh we always trying to maintain the standard of the 
uh, reviewing process and we also uh, want to give a, a higher certainty for the authors to get the results uh, in time yeah so we try to maintain within uh, i think within two months yeah they will get the feedback from uh, about their subscriptions yeah we are trying to improve the quality of the process and also we 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 and at the same time we also want to keep the quality of the reviewing process not only the administrative process so it's uh, really uh, challenging to maintain uh, the balance between the quality and also the uh, timeliness of the administrative things yeah and uh, using emerald uh, emerald platform it's uh, easy to monitor the process yeah uh, we have uh, six uh, there are nine uh, stages yeah uh, the first one is a checklist from the editorial assistant uh, and then uh, and then we pass it to associate editor and they will help us to uh, look for the reviewer and then uh, invitation of the reviewers and also assign reviewers and reviewer scores. And we also get uh, some uh, information about which paper are in overdue or uh, nearly meet the deadline and, and some other uh, useful information. It's a really good dashboard to help us and uh, maintaining the quality of the administrative things of the uh, organizing the journals. And also, uh, we can uh, we can treat. Uh, I mean, there are several uh, features that can help us on uh, uh, maintaining the uh, review reviewing process. Yeah, uh, but I think uh, Emerald is one of the best. Yeah, and. And also, we got we will get uh, some information if there is unusual activity report. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because sometimes uh, the reviewer will uh, they have a chance to uh, uh, what is that to make a little mistake, for example, like submitting the review before they finalize the review process. Sometimes it's happened. So uh, if uh, we had some uh, unusual activities. Uh, there will there will be a reminder from the <clears throat> Emerald systems, and uh, with regards uh, to abstracting and indexing, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, we are uh, we just finished submission process. Thank you for Judy, yeah, uh, uh, support us on uh, scope of submission and uh, two years, I think. Yeah, in late 2019, we got the good news uh, that we've been indexed in Australian Business Team Council. And also, some other reputable indexes, Cables, uh, DOAG, EBSCO, Salmon, and also WorldCat. Yeah, uh, so uh, we are trying to increase the, uh, what is that, the, the proportion of the accepted uh, papers so at the at the moment we have we have received uh, i mean we have issued the acceptance letter for 43% or 44% of uh, our received submissions yeah and then uh, yeah i think i can yeah i think that's what i have for today, uh, Irwan, uh, I think we can discuss further during the Q and A session. I'll give okay. it back to you, Irwan. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Doctor Imam. I think your time is uh, have the forty minutes, but you finish in twenty minutes. And I think I have the several question for you because uh, I want to encourage a lot of attendants to uh, have the question. But I check the question not so much in the attendance. But I have several question for the all the speakers. For Dr. Imam, I think the mostly of the journals in Indonesia is the is like the platinum open access, like the all the all the the the, the fee or the everything is sponsored by the institution. Like you are now, you sponsored mm -hmm. by the you have the support from the dean, the support from the Universitas Erlangga institution, and but problem for the mostly for the the journal from Indonesia is the when I speak to them about the Emerald Publishing Service, 
they think about the ML uh, because then they think about the Sinta, the in Indonesian indexing, yeah? yeah. And the Sinta, I don't know if it's true or not, the regulation is the 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 Sinta, the, the own, own, own Indonesian journals must have in the own DOIJ, not use the others DOIJ. Mm, yeah. The provider, yeah. Because if you see the, your indexing, your now is processed to the Scopus, but I check your journal is not indexing by Sinta. Uh, mm, this is yeah. very contradictive. Yeah, this is why I want yeah. to ask him because uh, may, yeah. may a lot of publisher, editor from Indonesia asking me about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Irwan. Uh, this is a uh, very interesting uh, questions. Yeah. And all, this is not, uh, uh, I mean, let me put this way. Yeah, I think uh, uh, three years ago, I, I was working as the secretary for the publication acceleration journal for Universitas Erlangga. So in the university level. So I'm I'm the one who, uh, uh, who organized how uh, journals in Universitas Erlangga will have, uh, uh, will be indexed in several uh indexing uh institution uh, scopus uh, we have also isi uh, web of knowledge and also others yeah and we also have like a uh, local indexing uh uh ranking uh, which is owned by the uh, one of the ministry uh, we call it sinta yeah at that time i have discussed with uh, one of the uh, uh what is that the organizer of the sinta and i've been discussed about the uh, uh Asian Journal of uh, Accounting Research. Yeah, um, uh, I think two years ago it happens to me to submit Asian Journal of Accounting Research to Sinta and got rejected. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, uh, and then I asked them why you reject uh, our application. They said that this is uh, not journal owned by Umita Saranga, but this is journal owned by Emerald. I've um, tried to explain to them and uh, how we uh positioning our journals uh, at that time when i was uh presenting our proposal to uh make the asian journal of accounting research to become one of leading international journal in asia uh one of my mindset is that uh, i will focus on international uh, uh what is indexing uh uh institutions for example like uh, scopus isi and other indexing journal but i'm not i will not focus on a local uh, local one, which is Sinta. But if they also open uh, the door for us to also be indexed in that uh, Sinta, it's okay, yeah. But uh, that's uh, my bargaining power to the Dean. Yeah. So the Dean also support us, okay, it's okay. Uh, we, we don't look at uh, Sinta indexing, but we focus on the uh, uh, international indexing uh, institutions because we already have several uh, journal index in Sinta. Yeah, but we want to increase the exposure. Yeah, and then uh, I'm asking them about why why uh, they uh, reject my applications because they said that this journal is owned by Emerald, it's not owned by Airlangga. And I've uh, mentioned if you look at the web page of the Emerald Asian Journal of Accounting Research, it's clearly stated that this journal is owned by Universitas Airlangga, but Emerald is only the publishers. Yeah. Uh, but they do not buy the uh, explanations. They didn't buy the, that explanation. And after I trying to find the reason, uh, they they received some complaints from uh, international publisher. I could not mention the names here. Yeah, some of the uh, uh, journal organizer in Indonesia have also made a step uh, to work with international publisher. But you know. Uh, most of them are predatory publishers so based on that one uh, they thought that uh, uh, even we know emerald has a big names yeah but i think we need to work together to uh, i mean to uh, convince the uh, sinta organizer or uh, several people who uh, manage the journal indexing indonesia to to know the real business process that we do i can I, mean, I can say that all the uh, Admin, administrative things, so finding editorial boards, finding editorial assistant, finding uh, 
and uh, reviewer is also done by it's it's done by Universitas Erlangga, not by Emerald. But Emerald support us on providing platform, uh, helping us uh, give us some consul uh, consultations, and also uh, trying to connecting the dot uh, with the uh, anything that uh, they can support, like uh, uh, spreading email to their contact and other things. Yeah, so. Um, up to now, there is no single uh, journal owned by Indonesian University who is working with overseas publisher or international publisher has been indexed in Cinta. Yeah, that's the story. Yeah. So uh, I don't know whether they have a new regulation because now I'm moving in the Erlangga Global Engagement Office. I'm not in charge anymore in the uh, journal uh, publication process at Erlangga. But I think uh, there is a room of discussion. Yeah, I think uh, there is a room of discussion uh, that we can also uh, make sure that uh, everything is. Uh, uh, this is only collaboration about the. Uh, if I can say, is like a branding. Yeah, branding. Uh, we work with Emerald. Emerald has a good uh, quality of branding, and we work with them about how to publish and also we, uh, uh, I mean, we work together on how to improve the quality of the journals. Yeah. Uh, is it make, is it uh, clear or make sense, uh, Irwan? Uh, yeah, I think it's the, it's very makes sense, uh, Dr. Iman, because it's the, because the publishing service like Emerald 2 right now is quite new for the, uh, for the uh, editor or the uh, managing editor for the uh, Indonesian journal. That's why it's, if you can, success this year can uh, your ager is will be indexing by the scopus i think you are the first time the in indonesian internet uh, journals is indexing by ager but but not indexing by sinta yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's quite surprised yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah. One is everything uh when i talk with the managing the editor is talking about sinta sinta that's why i that's why I want to know about your thoughts about Sinta. That's why this is uh, contradictive. Lah. It's just uh, about the regulation in our higher, uh, higher uh, education. I don't know from Sinta or uh, minis our ministry. Yeah, that's why it's very contradictive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I have maybe the... if I can add, uh, if I can add before you uh, uh, continue, um, I, I I have to say that Sinta is a good process on increasing the quality of the journal in Indonesia. But I think it uh, it would be uh, better if uh, Sinta could be more open. Yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, they can check the, uh, I mean, the explanation when we, when they reject uh, our application is not, uh, um, it's not convincing because they didn't ask, uh, they didn't in, do any interview at that time. But uh, we know, uh, uh, where we stand yeah we we focus on international uh, uh what is that uh, indexing institutions yeah. but we yeah. would be more than happy if uh uh Sinta also acknowledge us as a journal owned by uh, indonesian university because this journal is not owned by emerald we just work with emerald to increase the quality of the journals yeah okay Thanks. uh i think the yeah. okay thank you dr imam i have the question from the audience is from the bapak ibnu asko ripohan how the pattern yeah. of the collaboration between emerald and the journal and i mean we have the running journal first and the asking to supervise or acknowledge how is it i think like this because the when i thought uh, I, I see the ager ager is already have the the first issue is the already published their doij in erlangga but the second issue is already published the with the emerald how the transition i think the transition and how the collaboration the surface with the emerald too with the transition from the your moving from the your own doaj into the emerald uh, uh platform yeah can you explain more uh, I'll, yeah uh thank you pai no uh, irwan i would like to clarify is not doaj but ogs open Journal oh, yeah. system, right? Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Not the yeah. So uh it's uh yeah, it's correct, everyone. Uh we've been published uh, our first uh publication uh volume uh using OGS, yeah, uh open journal system. And at that time we, we are 
trying to expedite the process to in, uh, to have a what we call international visibility by collaborating with Emerald. And as I mentioned before, I have sending email to Emerald Publisher. At that time, I had a time to visit UK and we had a meeting to discuss something. I think uh, about the detail, maybe Judy can add yeah, about the, what type of collaboration. If I, it was four years ago, I can't remember exactly. They offer us about three possibilities yeah, on how we collaborate and we decided to uh, to fully funded the uh, uh, what is that uh, this journal uh, and uh, uh, yeah fully funded by Universitas Erlangga for I think four or five years contract and we need to discuss again I think next year with Emerald on what how we continue our collaborations and it's a very smooth process because we have a clear uh, uh, terms and condition on what we do and what uh, Emeralds do, yeah. So uh, uh, as the editor-in-chief, uh, I'm going to say that uh, Emerald support us on increasing the visibility of the international quality, of course, yeah, because they uh, do like a, uh, um, um, maintaining the discussion with AIC and give some recommendation, give some report and support for, for the indexing process and other things. Which is also can be done uh, independently by the uh, journal uh, organizer or journal manager, but uh, Universitas Erlangga made a different different step because I think uh, increasing the uh, uh, diversifying the collaboration in terms of research, not only with journal but also with publisher, will increase the visibility of the university as well. That's what we uh, thought, and uh, uh, and it works, yeah. Alhamdulillah, it works up to now. Yeah, hopefully um, we we will have uh, other journals. I mean, uh, from Indonesia, I hope that they can also try to uh, look at the opportunity working with uh, international publisher, especially with Emerald. Yeah, thank you, Irwan. Hopefully, um, I can answer Pak. <laughs> okay, if, I think Judith wants to can, edit. Yeah, if I can just chip in, <laughs> we do work. Hmm with both existing journals and new launch journals. So we do have um, EPS partners for two kinds of journals. So it could be existing ones like AJR. Um, it could also be like a new launch one. For new launch journals, we have a standard proposal template for uh, the editors, uh, the editorial teams to fill in so that we know a bit better about what kind of journal they want to launch and um, what sort of plan or what sort of goal the editorial team want to achieve. So that's for new launch journals. And we do have quite a few every year, so it's not uncommon. And we also have existing journals. So if there's already a journal uh, published by the university or institutions, um, we, we just need a basic information for these journals and we can then discuss how we collaborate, what kind of, uh, what's, what's the, what are their needs and how we can meet um, their requirements, etc. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Judy. And I have the question number two is from the Bapak Zikri Zul Fahmi. I think it's for, for Judy. Uh, okay. Could you, Please elaborate more on the broad procedure of the journal acquisition by Emerald. I think not, uh, I want to clarify Bapak Fikri, but like AJR is not acquisition, but the uh, yeah. AJR still owned by Unitas Erlangga, but but the only the system is will be different. Before the AJR is using OGS, Open Access System, OAG, yeah. Now is using the Emerald pro uh, system. That's why it's not acquisition, yeah. I think Judy can be explained more how the basic standard for the uh, for the journals who can collaborate like Ager, yeah. Besides the cost lah, because the fee and so on. What the basic standard must they have for the for the journals? Can yeah, they collaborate so, with like Ager? Yeah. So for like existing existing journals that's already been published, we uh, we just check so. 
as I mentioned, there are a few things we need to check about the journal info. So it's basically the same we're looking for. So we, we went to um, the journal homepage and then we see uh, the M's and scopes and their existing papers, the papers they have published, the member of the editorial team. So it's just basic uh, check through the journal info uh, just to make sure that the journal is um, has been managed uh, to a certain uh, standard. And it doesn't have to be like in DOAJ because we will be helping the editorial team, the journal uh, in this aspect. So it's only uh, the very basic uh, items like uh, what's their current publisher, what's the aims and scopes, and um, what, what the copyright license they're using. So some of the journal are open access, some of them are not. So I, I will be, we'll be checking that. And if they have any uh, transparency statement on their homepage, yes, just basic info that we're checking. Okay. Did we, uh, about the subject, uh, I think the subject is must be have relation with the, related with the EMRO subject or not? Because well, most of the current uh, EPS journals are related to Emerald subject, but we do have a few um, journals that's outside of expertise. But because uh, we at Emerald Publishing Services, we basically offer the services. So the editorial team remain independent with the journal, also as the ownership of the journal remain with the, the founder, the sponsor as well. So in this aspect, if the editorial team, uh, the editorial team manage the ed editorial parts, the content of the journal still remain with the editorial team. So it's basically the services. So services wise, if it's uh, outside the Emerald's expertise, as long as we have, uh, for like indexing wise, we will be able to help. We, we will still consider the, the option of working with the journals. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have also a question for Dr. Iman. Uh, you mentioned before is the your exp uh, your inspiration to uh, about the manage the journal is from your uh, PhD in the Hong Kong university uh, and why you choose emerald actually is the first the first is, is is your the first of your mind is choosing emerald become your uh the first uh thing or you 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 also you maybe you compare with the other publisher or something like that or no okay thank you uh Irwan. yeah so <clears throat> Uh, for two journals that owned by my uh, former university, City University of Hong Kong, uh, they were not working with Emerald, but with other publishers. But uh, at that time, when I uh, when I proposed my proposal to the dean, um, I think Emerald is one of the best publishers for social science. Yeah. So for science, we have many other options. Yeah. But. Uh, Emerald is quite strong in the uh, social science, and uh, when I check uh, several journals uh, published with uh, uh, Emerald, is a good quality of journals. Yeah, uh, that's one of the reasons why I propose uh, to work with Emerald. Yeah, and also I get. Uh, I mean, uh, I have to uh, say that I also contact with other publisher before I we finally decided with uh, Emerald, but. Uh, I think at the time we we uh, we have a positive uh, more positive feedback from Emerald. That's why we and at the time we 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 had a plan to visit UK, which is uh, Emerald is based in the UK. Maybe that that one uh, like the uh, uh, the experience that I had uh, on why we decide to uh, use Emerald. Uh, we have uh, several options of uh, potential uh, publisher, international publisher at the time, but finally finally we decided. Uh, we decided to choose Emerald based on uh, those things. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you very much, Miss uh, Dr. Imam. I uh, I think you. I hope it's not only because you come to the UK you choose the Emerald, yeah. Uh, because uh, if you come uh, no, no. <laughs> to the land Europe, uh, <laughs> it will be different publisher you plan. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, I did a lot of research and I visited many countries. Uh, but uh, of course, not the reason why 
I just am allowed uh, because I'm going to visit UK. Yeah, but it's good to uh, visit UK. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's the. I want to asking about the with Judy is the about the plan S. Yeah. Is 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 the is the new trend for the open access. Uh, the, can be plan S implemented to the Asian countries, especially developing countries like Indonesia. Can you explain more about that? Yeah, well, there actually are some critics when Plan S was announced. Um, for for one, is it's dominantly European uh, founders. So as I said, the collegian as members are uh, dominantly European organizations or um, associations, and also field so subject wise it's more applicable to stem areas so science technology engineering and mathematics so for social science because considering the whole uh, publication process how long does it take uh, for social science research to be done it's very different from scientific fields um, and also uh, it's mainly because open access is more uh, developed in Europe as well. So for East Asia at the moment, as far as we have observed so far, it was still be a bit difficult for the plan S to be applied to global wide, especially funding wide, because uh, plan S, the one of the key points for plan S is uh, the the authors um, are are sponsored by the collegian as members. However, these members, most of them are not in Asia. <laughs> So it would be very difficult for, for Asian authors to get the funding and then to comply with, with the, the plan as guidance and also for submitting the journals as well. So at this stage, we would say it will, it will be slightly difficult. It will be quite, well, not slightly, it will be quite difficult actually uh, for this to roll out uh, worldwide. Um, at the moment, so it's something we need to keep in keep an eye on, I would say. But uh, at this stage, yeah, probably not not as um, as dominantly in Europe, uh, like as dominantly in Asia, like it it is in in Europe. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Judy. And I want to asking also a little bit about the, with the Dr. Iman is what your what your expectation lah, with the ager maybe in the next five years you want as beside the ranking with the scopus what your major expectation uh what you want to achieve with the ager and maybe you can also with with collaboration with the emerald one you what what will you get for the maybe next five years or in the short Thank term you. Uh, Irwan. so uh, as i mentioned before we have five years four or five years contract with Emerald, but I hope uh, in the future we can look at what is the uh, what is that the opportunity in the future, yeah. So uh, based on my experience and based on my discussion, discussion with several uh, top scholars, uh, one of our purpose is that to provide a, a credible platform for uh, any researcher over the world yeah all over the world to publish their study about asian studies in accounting yeah uh, in uh, good journals in asia for example like if you look at top tier journal in uh, uh, in the world uh, mostly are coming from uh, united states europe and also some from australia yeah, we only we we found uh, uh, only a few journals that uh, they, they they have a good reputation of publishing uh, uh, papers uh, using uh, developing countries or is Asia countries as their sample, but it's only limited. Yeah, one of our main purpose is that to provide a credible platform for uh, a researcher to publish their works about Indonesia in a reputable journal reputable it means it's not only working with uh, international publisher yeah but uh, we have a, a standard of uh, reviewing process we receive uh, uh, high quality submissions and also we have uh, 
proper uh, what is that review uh, process and we had a uh, uh, good composition of board of directors and uh, reviewer so everyone who's submitting their papers to azure will will be uh, 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 will feel like uh, it's a word and it's beneficial because they will have a good quality of comments no matter whether they have rejection resubmissions or other things but they at least they receive a good quality of comments and if we if they have a chance to publish their paper in asian journal of accounting research it means they already passed the uh, discussion and the review process with the top scholars that's uh, uh, my expectation for the future and regarding the indexings hopefully uh, erlanga could be i mean azar will be one of the journal that will be indexed in uh, SSEI, yeah, Social Science Citation Index. Yeah, I don't know how long it takes, but uh, hopefully uh, we are towards that direction. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, what you comment is Dr. Imam. I hope you will continue again. Yeah, you renew again with our negotiation with the Emerald. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it's uh, any question from the floor. I think from the participant. Uh, I don't get any question again. I think uh, maybe okay. Uh, maybe it's, we want to get the closing segment now. Uh, maybe Dr. Imam, you want to be gives a little bit comment for the closing, and after that, Judy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Pak Iwan, uh, for uh, everyone who is attending uh, this. Uh, webinar uh, i hope that uh, we, we are continuing to support the uh, all journals not only in indonesia and especially in developing countries to grow together to increase the quality of the uh, uh, what is that the empirical research in uh, uh, in asia or developing countries because uh, we have a lot of things to be investigated and we have a lot of things that can attract uh, attention not only from overseas uh, uh, researcher but also the professional so i hope uh, that uh, we can continue to work together and to increase the quality of the journals and also we can also help each other yeah, uh, to support the quality of the journals thank you dr iwan Thank you, Dr. Imam. Uh, okay, now is uh, I think I, I have the, another question from the, uh, but I think it's for Judy is about the pricing model for this uh, service. Yeah, I think you can be a little bit uh, explanation about the pricing and also the about the APC. Yeah, and also about the APC. I think the must some participant is doesn't know the different with the gold and hybrid and also maybe like the APS is the platinum yeah it's something new for uh, the def, uh, new definition for them is about the open access can you explain more Judy? yeah uh, so the first thing I would like to clarify is uh, for EPS so for Emerald Publishing Services journals, the journal remain with the journal owner, so the institution or the founder, the association. It's different from Emerald's own journal. So Gold OA, Gold Open Access only applies to Emerald's own journal. So there will be two types. One is hybrid, that's Emerald's <laughs> traditional subscription journal. That's the school need to pay to access the content in the subscription journal. Journal. And the author can choose to publish the single paper in open access in Gold OA in the subscription journal, and that's what we call hybrid. For this one, you will need to pay APC. And the second one is Emerald also has fully Gold OA journals. That's its um, fully open access. We have two journals at the moment and for those ones the author also will need to pay apcs to publish papers in these two fully gold oa journals so that, so that's for OA, uh, emerald owned journals for eps journals the journals owned by the the school the universities the institution or the, uh, the associations it's not owned by emerald and 
the, the, the whole publication fee is covered by the journal owner. So the author will not need to pay any, any fees for, for submitting a paper to the journal for publication uh, of their papers. So that, that's the thing I want to clarify here. Um, so, so for EPS journal, basically the author doesn't need to pay. For MR own uh, journals, if you want to publish in OA, in open access, you will have to pay the APCs. I hope that makes sense. I want to, uh, uh, I think like this, yeah, I think for the, all the participants is the, like the Azure is the, is the, Azure is the journal owned by, once again, owned by Irtas Erlanga. It's not owned by Emeralds. This one must be clear like that. And Azure is journal by own Erlanga is, only changing their system, their system, their home <clears throat> from the open access system into the Emerald platform system. Yeah, and our system is only com is will be quite complete, like from the submission, dissemination into production, the whole system. Yeah. This is the the, uh, the collaboration between the Azure from the Erlanga and the Emerald is the is the system the home, and the Azure is this must be like the like you rent yeah like you want to leaving the new house but you must be rent you must pay for the house the home yeah is yeah, it uh, so it's very clear. If, if I can put it this way, for, for the services, for the EPS we provide, it's basically in, in infrastructure that a journal will yes. need. So the service, the peer review process, so first like we're using double black peer review in the system. So the system, the hardware and the software uh, you might need. However, the editorial part remain independent with the editorial team, so the editor uh, who runs the journal will still remain independent in that way. So we're mostly providing the support and also the systems from the MR side. That's what we call MR publishing services. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you for Judy. Is the we only giving the infrastructure, but the whole, uh, pro, uh, the whole like the co uh, copyright, uh, the editor reviewer still. Doctor Imam is the decision is yeah not us we be, uh, we provide yeah maybe we giving the some recommendation for the uh, editor and reviewer which will well known but but still dr imam will be decide who will be select and will be choose yeah but only the how only the infrastructure only the home will be using the amherst platform yeah i think it's i want to make it clear for the all the our audience pendant here about the aps uh any question anymore i think no thank you very much uh i hope is thank you very much for dr imam and judy and all our emerald team from the in kuala lumpur to support this event i hope this will be we can join again i got i hope dr imam will if we invite again to sure. this webinar is okay dr imam my pleasure my pleasure yeah okay thank you very Looking much forward. dr imam I, okay, I just want to add. You. I just want to add that once you receive the slides from us, there will be contact for me and Erwan uh, on the slides. So if you have any other questions that we haven't been able to answer in this webinar, please feel free to email us, and we will we'll get back to you via email. Yeah. Yes. In our, uh, if you download uh, our uh, our presentation, is also have the email. Judy and email me. You can contact me. Uh, or duty to detail information about the Emerald Publishing Service. Thank you very much for the all attendance. Thank you very much, Dr. Ima and Judy. And I hope we will be joined together again to the another webinar. And thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you.